Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog in a rare moment of relative tranquility apart from the chilly unit in the background making a little bit of noise we just have the soothing trickle of the sparge going on behind us we've mashed in this morning for the pail we've got the malt in the mash tun I'll take you off the tripod we'll go and have a look oh well would you listen to that so the uh, we'll have that one so the AC unit for the fermenters stops and then the one down here for the cold room kicks in we can't catch a break can we so almost quiet in here this morning this is a very soothing sound indeed so there we go we've got the trickle the trickle of the sparge happening down there you should just be able to see that if I adjust the illumination a little bit and then of course in the boil kettle we're running off our sweet wort and that's doing the same thing no doubt a few thousands of comments about hot side aeration I don't worry about it look at that lovely jubbly so I'm about to hit uh, fermenter 2 with some paracetic acid to sanitize it but I don't really need to do that until the boil is well underway. I have some hops to weigh out this morning. And whilst I was, uh, well during the weekend, I was going to say while I was ill on the weekend, but during the weekend, some of you may know that I suffered from bursitis, so I didn't get any jobs done that I wanted to do. I was meant to be working in the garden, but I did, however, achieve this. So we've taken the ST, uh, the control panels for the new tanks home and I sat and wired them all up apart from, of course, the STC-1000 which you can see the authentic ones sitting there in the boxes waiting to be installed. So all I have to do is just pop out of these screws like so and open the box and you can see everything is in here ready to go still with loads of bits of glue I've even got the wires here ready to hook around to the STC so we just need to fathom what's what which is easily done with a multimeter Bob one of the STC 1000s in there and then these little fellas are ready to control our five new fermenters and we can start then to begin the job of cladding them. I'm going to need to go and get some heat blankets so I just generally use the normal heat blankets that you get to put on your bed like ten pound from Argos or something like that very cheap and then we'll wire them into this relay here so we're not putting the load of the heat blanket through the STC we want to let the relay do the work and then if there's any problem we can just change out the relay like so and we don't have to worry about burning out the relays in this little fella these are 12 quid for instance and these are about 50 pence each I generally order from eBay packs of 10 and they come from China like this in a little plastic packet and you can see I've already been replacing a few out there in the brewery you just have to make sure that you get the correct rating on them so these ones for instance are rated for 220, 240 I've said it before but if you want to make them live a bit longer take out the uh, resistor and LED because that's what creates the heat and burns them up and what we've got in here, yeah, more 240, 220, 240s. But if I come across here to my drawer, which is marked up relays, you'll see that we've got all different types in here. If I can find one, it won't make me out to be a lie now, is it? Well, they're all, there we go. So you can see that one there is uh, 
rated at 12 volts DC. So that's actually the coil that's rated at 12 volts DC, not the contacts. And we should have in here some 24 volts as well. That's another 12. But you get the picture. We've got a couple of other relays in here. A few spare switches. Big three phase relay. I bought some of these connectors the other day. Tom and I were talking about how oh, he's going to connect up his uh, thermoprobes to his control panel. And I think he's gone for the SLR connectors, which I've got on mine, but I don't really like them. So we were discussing these. These are automobile connectors, which are meant to be uh, relatively water resistant. You can see they've got like a silicon rubber sleeve on there. So maybe they are, maybe they aren't, but they look a little bit lighter than the metal XLRs. I've got some of those XLR cables in here. I probably do if I rummage around a little bit. And yeah, I'm not a real big fan of the XLRs. Let's see if they're in here. Because I find them, A, you've got to weld them up, which is a pain in, or solder them up, which is a real pain in the arse. And B, they weigh a lot. Well, I can't seem to find any. Maybe I used them all. Maybe I used them all on the, uh, on the controllers for the uh, the cold room. Yeah, this is the fellas here, look. These are the ones. So you mount one side into your control box and the other side is a plug that pulls in and out. Which is pretty good, looks neat, but all your weight's on these wires here if you don't mount it. And I think Tom was on about having it floating in the air, so. Anyway, just a little bit of a tangent there, folks. So these are the connectors that we've got to join all our control panels together as well. These are Swift 4-pin plug connectors. And once you fill the back in here with silicon, it's relatively waterproof. So I have two of these coming out of each control box. And then I just daisy chain them together by plugging one of them in. Having an extension cord, I'll be able to show you on one of the existing fermenters while I go past and check the level of the sparge. We don't want to be... Oh, that looks about perfect. You can just about see... Well, you can't see anything now. But you could just about see the grain. Oh my goodness. What have I done? There we go. So yeah, here's an example. Sealed up with silicon. And then daisy chained across to that one. And then daisy chained across to that one. And then at the end, it comes across and it talks to the cooling unit. Well a pump mounted inside the glycol bath which is in there and that uh, turns on when these little fellas call for it so that's sat there at minus 12 and it's just happy sat at that temperature until one of these calls for cold and then the cold gets pumped into the jacket the cooling jacket on the back of the tank which is very similar to this very similar to this but a little bit bigger on the ones that I built and then of course the cold gets exchanged for heat as it flows through these cooling panels here on the back in the bottom there's the valve look that opens the the electronic valve that opens it to allow the cold in and then when the glycol flows through the tank it warms up comes back out and goes back into the reservoir where the controller on this little unit here, which is basically an AC unit with the evaporator in the glycol, when the glycol begins to warm up, this little fella will turn on and cool it down. And of course we've done the same thing for the cold rooms over here. The only difference is instead of buying an AC unit and trying to make it work like we have done, we just went out and got a classic 1000 uh, remote beer cooler. I'd recommend getting a newer version than a classic 1000, but well, you've you've seen the videos. It does the job, and all the heat from this gets piped outside via a heat dump. Whereas the one that we've got over here, all the heat is blown into the brewery. So in the summer, when it's hot, hey, buddy, How do you? then of course 
it's sort of counterintuitive. We want it to be cold in here, but this is going to be blowing the hot air in when it's already hot enough. So we'll probably be changing this out in the future for a remote beer cooler. Uh, but until we've got the money to do it, this does the job perfectly, I think. Right, let's get back to uh, changing these STCs out. He's a soppy fella. Quick blowy. Kiss. So in order to make some content today for the video, because uh, I'm brewing and we've all seen the brewing, and of course we're going to be doing the Centennial Red brew day tomorrow, so I don't want to like, fill up the vlog with brew days. Um, I decided, well it was decided for me really, uh, you all know who Tony Yates is right? I'm sure you do. One of the best home brewers on the tubes. Tony is definitely uh, one of the more cautious and attentive brewers on the tubes and uh, not a lot slips under his radar to be honest. Uh, he left a comment on one of the videos the other day saying why would you take a risk on brewing 500 litres of beer when you really have just thrown the recipe together and you don't know whether you're going to get a red ale or a sweet brown ale that's going to be obviously hanging around on the bar for a long time. Um, really I don't mind if I get a, a sweet brown ale because I'll just, we'll just change the name to sweet brown ale. Um, I know the kit pretty well though so I don't think we'll get a sweet beer out of this. I could be wrong. That's the beauty of throwing these recipes together. But he recommended doing a, uh, a test batch, maybe of only around a litre I imagine, uh, to get a better idea of what kind of colour we were going to achieve with the mix of grains that we've got. And, well, I've already put the recipe together and I've shared it, so we're going to run with that recipe anyway. But I took it on board and I thought, well, that will make some good content for the vlog, you know. So I've printed off the recipe here and I've scaled it down to one litre. And 150, 200 grams of grain going into it, but it will give us an idea of what this beer is going to look like after the mash. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to ferment it out. Maybe we can. Maybe if I'm careful enough. I've got nothing to boil it in really apart from the kettle. I could boil it in the kettle. But no, we're just going to do the mash and we'll run it off and we'll see what colour we get from the mash. And then, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe I will boil it. We'll see where we go with it. I could always take it home and boil it. I don't really have anything here to do it in. Um, but it'll give us an idea of what colour we're going to achieve with the grain bill that we've got for this Centennial Red. And uh, it's a bit of filler for the vlog. So let's go ahead and get the grain out and put the kettle on and uh, mash up this mini, 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 mini mash. <laughs> right, we've got the kettle boiling. What I'll do is measure out the water that we need here and get the temperature right and then we'll mix it in the in a clear tub and then pour it maybe into this pint glass to mash and uh, leave it for a while. Let's go and get the grains. Brilliant, so here are the grains which look pretty pretty cool, I can't really tilt it without changing uh, the distribution of them all. So, pale malt, Munich malt, crystal 400, Crystal 240, Crystal 110, and roasted barley. So now you've seen that, see if we can get like a fancy little bit of a thumbnail for the video there. That should do us. Then what I want to do is pop this on the scales. So we want to be mashing at 67. So let's just pop some hot water into this jug. measure the temperature. We've got the water at about 87 degrees. It's asking for 600 grams of water in the recipe. We could really do with a better shot. So let's just turn this on and add 600 grams. We're just a little bit short there, so let's pour some in from the kettle. There we go, a little bit much, but that's good. 
Right, we can remove the scales now and give this a good mix and get the mash going. Already not seeing much colour, but you know, we've got to give it time, haven't we? Shall we see what temperature it's holding out at? Well, 68, 69. Not far off there at all, is it? Looking good. We're 60, 66 and a half degrees C. So that's good enough for the gills I go out with. Just pop that back over there. Right, now I'm going to just pop this somewhere. Probably on top of the boil kettle. And uh, try and keep it warm for a little bit of time and let it do its thing. There we go. Right folks, we have boiled the kettle, we've almost finished the brew day and uh, the, the beer behind me is on um, a whirlpool break now, just settling. This is the IPA mini mash that we've done. Um, the colour is kind of brown, you know, it's definitely not red, definitely not red. Uh, but I don't know, I th difficult to get a true representation, isn't it, before a boil. But uh, let's see if we can get it through maybe this mesh uh, colander, this sieve, to get the grain out and then we can replicate a sparge because that's obviously going to change the colour of the liquid as well so we'll just get rid of that and then I, like I said I've got the kettle here so we'll put a bit of water in there just to cool it down initially and then we'll go ahead and kind of just sparge across the top here, get that in. Not, not way low, <laughs> not with too much water, of course. We're trying to emulate a brew day, so I think that would probably be a very close second. Right, then, let's take this grain. I'm going to go and empty this spent grain into the uh, into the grain bags for Billy the sheep to pick up tomorrow and then we'll come back and we'll see if we can't filter this a little more. I might even boil it, you know. You know what folks, screw it, I'm boiling it. And I'm going to boil it in the kettle. <laughs> it's the work kettle anyway, no one's going to complain. Right. There we go. So what have we got? Oh, look at that for efficiency. We've got four cups. Four cups. Let's put that on. Let's get it boiling. Here it comes. Just keep flicking it on and off. Here we go. You calm down, lad. Okay, I think I've got past the hot break, as you'll see, there we go, look at that rolling away. Uh, we've got quite a lot of steam though, bubbling around up on, up on the uh, top of the kitchen area, better show you that. So uh, yeah, I've been boiling this for about a minute or so, I think I'm going to call it a day, I'm going to transfer it, we've lost a little bit, you know, we've lost about half a cup. So I'm going to transfer it and see if we can cool it down. I think we've done everything that we need to do to replicate a brew day. We should have some Maillard reactions going on in the boil kettle here. And uh, all we need to do now is try and chill this down as fast as possible and settle it out. So I need to figure out a way to chill it. But first I'll transfer it to another container. 
this is um, a polycarbonate container so it should handle the temperature it's looking a little darker isn't it a little darker I'm going to clean my kettle out before anything gets baked on and then we're going to try and filter this also oh, looking at that we're already seeing some protein break out that looks fantastic and you know what I think that's got a bit of a red tinge to it don't you I think it might just have well to be fair I can't think of any other way to cool it down so we've got our yeast and whatnot in here and our finings so I'm just gonna pop him in there and let him settle out in the fridge hopefully in 20 minutes or so that will have cooled sufficiently you can already see it's already starting to settle look now you tell me folks does that look red? it's not far off diesel is it? so yeah we'll leave this to settle out we'll come back and we'll pour ourselves a glass Okie doke folks, I'm just checking the HLT is not going to overflow, um, I think that our test is cool enough now to pull out of the fridge and have a look at what colour we're going to get on tomorrow's brew, potentially. Right, I'm going into the fridge of wonder, here we are, so I'm trying not to rotate this container at all, just make sure that door's shut. There we go, so you can see it's separated quite nicely and uh, we've got a good layer of trub at the bottom, it looks quite brown. So I'm going to have to rotate after all, put everything stained down at the bottom nicely. So let's grab this pint glass, this should be pretty representative of the beer that we're going to get. It's still a bit warm as you can see. Darker than you thought it was going to be. It's darker than I thought it was going to be. Um, but if we get some light behind it, I don't know. What colour do you think that is? So I'm kind of cheating by putting the light behind a little bit, but. Uh, it is very difficult. It is very difficult to tell. That's my buckets filling up behind. I made the pyramid of buckets again. So let me go and get a torch. It smells quite malty, but you know, it's not gone through a proper mash and boil, has it? I think that's pretty red. It's about, it's red enough, oh, it's difficult to tell. How about if I turn this light off? It's not really helping, is it, folks? It's not really helping. It kind of does look red there. But again, it's, uh, it's a bit of a false indication because it's obviously not clear. And uh, I'm tempted to have a drink. <laughs> Shall we? Go on then. Mmm. Very sweet. Yeah, maybe I'll put it back in the uh, in the fridge a little bit longer and we'll see if we can't get this to settle out a bit more and maybe give us a better indication. But it is not as black as it looks on here. See if I can just play around with the settings a little bit. Yeah, that's closer to what it is. That's a lot closer. So, yeah, let's pop it in the fridge and maybe come back to it tomorrow and we'll see how it looks then. Because I've got to clean up the remnants of today's brew. I'm obviously, oh my goodness. First time that's happened. The hose pipe floated out the top of the top of the bucket. Right, as you can see, it's like a clown car and the doors are falling off. So uh, what I'm going to do is put that back in the fridge, go and concentrate on finishing today's brew so that doesn't go wrong, and then we'll come back and we'll sign out. And there we have it folks. The chiller's on, bringing that beer down to temperature, regulating it effectively. 
I've put some SL5, USL5 in there. That beer's ready now um, to ferment over the next few days. Tomorrow we are going to be doing the Centennial IPA, so you don't want to miss that. I think the colour's red enough for me. People will say it's a bit brown, I'll say it's a bit red. People will say it's a bit black, whatever. It's close enough for what we've got in stock. All the grain is in the mash tun. The boil kettle is ready to come on for a clean in the morning and the HLT is ready to come on and heat up at the same time. I'm going to go home and get fully rested because doing a full brew day video is always a bit of a tiring job to juggle the video and the brew day together. So I will see you tomorrow. Subscribe, hit the bell icon to make sure you're notified when the video arrives in your inbox and uh, we'll see you tomorrow for the Rad Red Centennial IPA. Cheers.